breath. Good afternoon and welcome to a new edition of TH Talks Bengaluru, a live chat where we enable you to talk to the men and women in power, um, you know, be it the uh, traffic commissioner, the police commissioner. We've brought you a range of uh, officials and uh, uh, important people at the center of the news. And today we have with us the Minister for Energy, Mr. K.J. George. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, ever since the Congress government announced the five guarantees, uh, everyone was curious about whether they're going to be implemented, how is the government going to do it, and uh, uh, two guarantees that were introduced first were uh, Shakti, the free um, women travel for, uh, by state-run buses, and uh, now we have the Gruha Jyoti, which has actually come into force. The first question that uh, everyone wants to know is, obviously regarding Gruha Jyoti, uh, how many registrations have come in so, uh, so far from across Karnataka? Where has where have the maximum number of registrations come in? And uh, the second half of the question that uh, some people have asked is: Have has the government started reimbursing the escorts uh, for these for the free supply of power? Can I start? Please do, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everybody. There's uh, history behind our Bhagya Jyoti or all five guarantees. You know, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who is our leader, started a Bharat Jyoda Yatra. He interacted with the people, common people, everybody. He listened to them. He also walked with Karnataka about 600 kilometers. Then what happened the people's grievances? Because of many problems they faced. First of all, economic problems. Economic problems. The price rise, their income is not going to increase, but they have to pay heavy expenditure for the essential commodities as well as other things for children education. That's why Congress party before the election, it is not the government who announced this high guarantee, it is the Congress party under the leadership of mm -hmm. Sistra Maji, who was the opposition leader. And Mr. Dikesh Kumar was the KPCC president. They announced and given a guarantee program signed by both of them. Then we promised that first cabinet itself we will start implementing all the five guarantee programs. Then I was not the energy minister, but when the government formed, I become the energy minister. Implementing this Rojoti program. I have taken the responsibility. And we had given a promise that 200 units, up to 200 units, we can give for the household. Then we formulated the thing, taking average of 12 months consumption. And plus, our chief is added another 10% more. That was the limit, that much they get eligible to get the subsidy. That's how the program is doing, and totally about two cores, sorry, one core 54 lakhs people registered. And it was two cores, that's what I wanted to, can you change it? Yeah, I want to tell two cores 60 lakhs was the total consumers we are in the in the Karnataka, Karnataka as domestic consumers with RR numbers. 
out of the two cost 14 lakhs are eligible to get the subsidy because they are used less than 200 units of power. When the registration start, and we are not even now we are not announced any cutoff date. Even even now the people who are eligible they can apply for it. One lakh fifty four, one crore fifty four lakhs people applied for this uh, eligibility criteria and they are got it. This is what we are. This is a very very uh, flagship program of Karnataka government to help the people who are needy. You would ask me any question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, apart from the number of registrations, uh, the reimbursement to ESCOMs as well. How has, how has the government started the reimbursement uh, to ESCOMs for the scheme and how is it being done, sir? You see, when we are saying that this ARA, the, the, the radio record, there's a meter, meter, you, you know, every household, they got a meter. We, based on meter only, we got the computerized all records, consumption, and all the things. We expected uh, about two cost 40 lakhs people were eligible. But if your consumption is more than 200 units, then you are not eligible for this thing. But one core 54 lakhs people applied. That's why we are given. And the government of Karnataka is embracing all the ESCOMs. That's the thing they are reversing. That we already we got 640 cores. We already got it. That's why it's already started. We have started paying for the government of Karnataka to the, all the ESCOMs. Uh, predictably, sir, a lot of questions from readers have also come in about the Griha Jyoti scheme. Um, the government has put out FAQs, but still some do uh, doubts persist because the scheme itself is new. Uh, Channa Basawa has asked us if for people who recently moved into a rental home, if it was unoccupied previously, the free ent entitlement units is showing as zero or close to zero. So he's asking, shouldn't they at least be given a minimum entitlement of a couple of units, say 53 units is what he suggested as default for people who move into new homes so that they become eligible for the scheme? See, this question raised, actually it was raised by the press conference, some of the journalists there raised this question. How about the uh, rental people? They started just now, there are no record of one year record. The same way the new houses, somebody occupied, if they are not having a one year record to take average, then we uh, discussed with the chief minister. The chief ministers told you can have the 53 units is the average of Karnataka consumption. That 53 plus 10 percent. That means 58 units we are giving to them so that they are eligible for 58 units. But anybody can go up to 200 units also, but they'll get free up to 58. Then whatever they are consuming more than 58. They have to pay as a regular bill up to 200. That is the, uh, the thing we have made. That is. Uh, sir, uh, Kumar Venkataraman is asking us this question. Uh, their question is, is Griha Jyoti applicable for household water pumps? Apparently, they checked with the BESCOM office and they were told that it's not applicable to them. So they're asking for a clarification. Oh, it is household only. Only we are taking the RR meters. So every household, there will be a meter. Because we got all record of these meters only. That's why we are taking RR meters. Of course, that is in the household only RR meters. Yeah. Uh, sir, another question which we have gotten from uh, many readers is that after registering for uh, Griha Jyoti, uh, we are not receiving any kind of acknowledgement. We don't know if we have been accepted or rejected. So why is there no system to uh, sort of let us know that if we've been accepted or not? See, accepted means the electricity bill will come. That is the acceptance. Will, uh, the thing. What you have any applied, we will send the SMS. Uh, sending the acknowledgement we are received. But acceptance only will come, you see, it's already started. It's not the question of the day. For July, we started giving 
free electricity for who are eligible for consumers. That's what we are doing. Doing already, it has done. So there are some questions about uh, the financial health of the ESCOMs themselves, not just the ESCOMs, but also, you know, uh, Abhilash AS has asked about the financial distress that uh, KPTCL and ESCOMs are faced with, because year on year, they're seeing tariff increase, uh, higher power purchase costs are being cited, d, &D losses are being cited. So he's asked, even after almost 25 years of enacting Reforms Act, the internal aim of the act is not achieved. So uh, what, you know, these companies are not in a position to generate their own revenues. So he's asking, what are the ways and means to rejuvenate already draining, ba ba draining balance sheets of the KPTCL and ESCOMs? I don't think that this, uh, after this uh, reformation, the things are improved a lot. See, these companies is raising their own resources. And also they are receiving from the government of Karnataka the various servants. You know, these uh, IP sets, up to 10 HP, we are giving free power. But that also we are compensating by subsidy. We are not uh, penalizing any of ESCOMs. Even Grojyoti also. The government of Karnataka is reimbursing. There's no question of we are penalizing them all because of this uh, program, they get any burden of financial burden. No, that is not there. But ESCOMs or BESCOMs, they are giving uh, public service and all. They have to build infrastructure. A lot of money is going for infrastructure. And also the situation, whenever we generate more power, and all these years, about two, three years, there's uh, excess power. Today, the power demand is much high. That we are coping up with all this uh, situation. Uh, so you spoke about infrastructure. Now there are uh, two questions that have come in. One is from Mr. Dinesh, who's asked about uh, power supply for rural areas. He's saying, you know, despite Karnataka now becoming a power surplus uh, state, uh, uninterrupted power supply is still a dream for many rural areas in the state, especially the Malnad areas where probably power interruptions are far higher than uh, elsewhere because of the terrain or what, whatever is the reason. Um, anything being done on that front, sir, to ensure that power supply is smoother, especially in the rural areas? See, we had excess power when the COVID situation was there. Then, you know, many industries were the thing and the demand and the activity, grid activity also come down. Today, we are facing a different situation. You know, today's our demand is more than last time peak summer demand. All of a sudden, demand has gone up. That's why we are generating about 252 million unit of current every day. But our demand is 269 million unit. That is a, that's a deficit of 17 million. It's not a much of a deficit, but this 17 million has started now itself. It's supposed to be the thing. And everybody knows this year, deficit rain is there. That is the, that's the one reason also. And normally our thermal plants is monsoon season, we will close it down. We won't uh, generate much because that time we'll have enough hydro we'll, uh, thing. and also for service, maintenance and service will lock down. But this year, unfortunately, we are locked down, but the demand has gone up. So we already told them almost it all started, all our thermal projects have started. And another problem which we are facing is because of the quality of the coal. Because of monsoon of the, the North India and all the, the coal is mining. There the rain was there, a transportation also. And quality of our coal is also not good. That's why we could not able to achieve the maximum productivity of our thermal plants. This is one reason. Anyhow, we are planning to import coal and blend uh, imported coal with the local coal. That's what we are planning. And also we are thinking about washing the coal because the ashes is more in our Indian coal. That's also we are thinking. We are discussing various uh, way to face this situation. Uh, another concern that readers have raised is about uh, power cuts every time it rains. Uh, this year, of course, Karnataka, many parts of Karnataka are faced with a drought, but 
um every time especially even in bengaluru i i think any time there's a even a small rain people start putting up on twitter about how power supply is unreliable uh, what has been done to address these challenges you see the bengaluru also is known as a garden city you know many trees are there in the garden city branches will fall trees will fall that's why we are going uh, we are almost laying underground uh, the thing, cable system we, are, we achieved the thing once that is over i think that we can face and rural areas also same problem is the thing because now what we are thinking this shortage of power we could not augment power for the last four years i think only 400 to 500 megawatt we because there was no demand we are not produced more now demand is there we have to produce more what we are thinking we are taking to the cabinet also we are taking subject to the cabinet also we wanted to solarize the substations so that this problem won't be much problem won't be there the local that area only that uh, that substation will supply and even the transmission losses also we can reduce this is what we are thinking once that plan is so uh, the thing implemented i think that rural what you are told about rural farmers issue and rural electricity also we can solve. I think this uh, we already made a plan for it. Ultimately, the cabinet will take it to the cabinet. Cabinet support. Then we will st start solarization of the uh, generating current in the substation level itself. And also we are thinking standalone concepts, the thing, so that the farmers can have their own the thing. There also we are giving sixty percent subsidy, thirty percent from the state government, state. Uh, 30 percent federal government i think that also i wanted to take it to a cabinet and we will take addition in the cabinet what is the further helping the farmers to have their own solar energy and also substation energy through solar uh, so next question uh, is regarding uh hd lines going underground so we have got uh, two questions uh with regard to this from Abhina Reddy and Ananda Gundura. So they ask, where are we with the conversion of all the overhead HD lines to UG? The issue has been pending for at least three years now. And Mr. Anand Gundura asks that uh, they face power tripping at least two to three times a day. And uh, a couple of years ago, they were told that once HD cables go underground, this problem will be resolved. But they say the problem still persists. So there's a lot of queries about uh, lines going underground. Sir. Uh, priority we are giving already almost I think that uh, two the thing what is uh, uh, ninety six percent is completed in Pena and uh, uh, other substations we are completed the, okay. the UG Nag Nagarbavi and Pena and other part of the uh, Bangalore also we are taken I think that shortly we will finalize everything and we'll see that the entire Bangalore city will be. Uh, cable will go under the so The next question has come from uh, Mr. Sachin Rice. So he asks, as it has been mandated for apartments to have their own trans transformers if they have a certain number of houses, uh, they have sort of started putting them up in front of apartment buildings, you know, sometimes on footpaths or sometimes encroaching the roads. Uh, so he asks that the noise from this is disturbing and it also poses a safety threat. So are there any guidelines around this? And uh, one more question which is related to this is uh, so many readers have asked if we will be when will the transformers be moved away from footpaths? When will this uh, work be completed? See, the problem is I don't think that uh, apartment has to use space in their own other uh, thing, uh, apartment there. Place only to have the transform. They cannot put in the footpath. Footpath problem is for a public, you know, street light and other other amenities. There's no place means we are putting in the footpath. But that also some of the other places which hazardous is there. The, we already 2,300, I think, that maybe approximately. That out of that is about uh, uh, 2,300 is rectified out of. Uh, Two five uh, two thousand five hundred nothing two thousand three hundred only two hundred is left where the hazardous and troublesome for the pedestrian that we are doing it and if anything uh, other than this thing is also there we will uh, 
see that it will be shifted. So the next question has come from one of our readers, Mr. <clears throat> G. Jai Kumar. So he is asking, how are the thermal power uh, stations in our state working? And how is the current power availability in the state due to failure of monsoon? And he also asked if the government is in the process of uh, saving power during peak hours because we are experiencing a lot of power cuts during peak hours. I don't think that is uh, the, the, now the problem which we are facing is a peculiar problem. Now, this is a monsoon season. Our demand has gone up. The last, when the demand was there, the summer, already that that uh, that uh, quantity of uh, demand is raised even the monsoon time. That's why the peak hours or the thing, our demand has gone up. That's why we are I already told you about we are going to energize all the, the you know uh, thermal. We have to we are planning to produce more in the thermal units. And also solar and wind. This is what we are planning. Energize the substation also. Okay. Uh, localize this. That's why I think that we can. We are make a contingency plan to uh, face this type of situation. And uh, future, we will uh, the thing will have a uh, plan. Even the demand comes more. Also, we will have a long time. Uh, you know, purchasing. Uh, long-term purchase, power purchasing agreement with the uh, neighboring states and the other states also we are doing it. This is what we have to always do. And this time we are taking it very seriously. And today I had a meeting with the all senior officers to discuss everything. We have made a contingency plan. It will implement it. Uh, staying on the topic, sir, um, you know, since the monsoon hasn't been up to mark, uh, what are the hydro reservoirs or uh, hydro uh, reserves looking like? You know, as far as power purchases, uh, power generation is concerned, and how much are we depending on solar? If you could, uh, if you could give us a sense of where most power is being generated right now to meet the higher demand that you mentioned. The the thing is, still we never got, uh, lost the hope. Still, we are. Uh, I'm very much confident. Once we have we are sure that again it will come. It may come little late. That will save us. Okay, if it is not happened, also because I already told the contingency plan. See, today we are generating for solar about forty-two million unit, wind about seventeen million unit, hydro about forty-one, thermal about forty-nine unit. This is our the thing. Okay, this also is a wind and uh, solar. Is depending upon the weather also. If the weather is uh, cloudy, then solar production will go down. There's no wind, then the wind uh, generation also go down. And because hydro depend upon the rain. That's why we got some other plants also. We want to increase our solar. That is a more dependable because the monsoon season, the irrigation concepts won't work. The demand won't be there. That's one thing. Second thing is we wanted to pump store the other thing. That is the uh, the thing we wanted to take a bit of the thing, you know, we are pumping in the uh, the thing, pumping in the daytime with solar cheaper energy and storing it in our reservoir, and within five minutes we can start generating hydro. This is what we are planning, and many people are come forward also. KPCL is also from uh, our thing. We have wanted to take Sharavati for this one. Anyhow, all this is in the pipeline. We will take a decision, as I told you. Now, Pavagada, the, the thing we got at solar uh, the same park. I think that is one of the best park in India when we started it. Is a 2,200 megawatt is one place we are generating. There, the farmers have come forward now. It's a very unique uh, project. And we are not uh, acquired the land from the farmers, but we are taking on the lease and they are getting the lease. Now, they are willing to do another 10,000 acres. That is again about 2,000, 2,500 megawatt. We can generate. Plus, we are thinking this uh, substation, the thing. The, all the things we are we have got at the thing. I think coming uh, months, coming years, we will have a good strategy to face this type of situation. And you know, this is not the first time we have faced and many times this type of shortage was there, power cut was there at all. 
As on today, we are not announced any power cut, but we are hoping to get some rain. That's why we can save the situation. I said the next question is from uh, Mr. M. G. Prabhakar. So he is asking if the government will consider the recommendations of the Guru Charan Committee. Well, if you can elaborate, what is the, the thing? What is the problem? What is the committee suggest? If you can tell me something, because I am also new energy minister. <laughs> So Guru Charan Committee had uh, submitted this report on the financial health of ESCOMs and how it can be improved uh, a few months ago. So uh, Mr. Prabhakar wants to know if the government will consider these recommendations. Yeah, I don't know much about the Guru Charan Committee, but our uh, this thing, you know, ESCOMs, everything is monitored. You know, Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission is there. Actually, they are the people, they are very closely monitoring about the health of all our JESCOMs and all the things. They are reviewing every time. Without their permission, we cannot do anything. And uh, the chairman is a very experienced person, Mr. Ravi Kumar, who was the uh, chief secretary and he was energy secretary for a time, uh, many times. I think he is guiding them. And we are also see that all the uh, suggestion which has come from the regulatory authority will be implemented. That is a very good uh, thing, program we got. I'll also see what is the Guruchar committee. Also, maybe the same line uh, that committee also, but it's also considered that. No problem. Um, another doubt that uh, some people have asked about is whether the Gruha Jyoti scheme will have an impact on the solar rooftop uh, scheme. So, uh, the progress of the scheme itself has been slow, uh, probably because of costs involved earlier. Even though you know it's success progressively gotten slightly cheaper uh, a lot of people are now wondering if you know if i'm getting free free power supply then why do i have to invest in a solar rooftop so do you think that we are we are not discouraging solar rooftop nothing you know maybe subsidy or maybe something might not reduce that otherwise we always encourage the people to go that solar roof but what uh, the problem which we face instead of solar uh, rooftop they started putting on the ground the solar, the thing, that may be the reason. Anyhow, I'll, uh, I'll review it and I'll come back. Uh, sir, uh, regarding uh, solar uh, schemes only, uh, one more uh, uh, reader, Malla Reddy, has asked a question. He has asked if the government has started receiving bids for uh, solarization of IP sets under PM Kusum Yojana. Yes, you're right. The thing is, first we called for a tender, last government, they called for a tender. That time the, uh, the price fixed by the, uh, the, the regulatory authority was 2 rupees 32 paisa. When they called for a bid, nobody has responded for that bid because it doesn't lower this. Now we are approached the uh, regulatory authority, KES. Then they are now the proposal is there. Is not, they are not issued the order, but I think that they are going to fix uh, 3 rupees 17 paisa per unit. If they fix that, again, we'll call for a tender and we'll, we'll file the thing. We'll file a signature. Well, sir, we have uh, got one question from the real Bangalorean who has joined our uh, live chat. So he is asking if the government can push or give subsidies to farmers for solar power. He is saying we have huge potential to harness the same as quarter energy requirements in the state are from agricultural purposes. No, I could not able to follow your the same word. No, subsidy for what? Uh, so he is asking are... if uh, government. He is asking if uh, more push can be given to the subsidies given to farmers for solar power, as there is a huge potential yes. to yes, harness yes. the same. That is not for Bangalore people. That's for the rural people. We are, we are. This subject also we are taking before the cabinet. We wanted to, the thing you know, more irrigation pumps that should be solar based. That's what we are thinking. That's the cheap power. That's what we are thinking. And anyhow, I'll 
discuss with the cabinet when the next cabinet we are taking some issues you know, about the electricity, what we are facing and all. That time we will discuss and ultimately cabinet has to take a decision for it. Uh, so now the Congress government has successfully launched a free power scheme uh, for domestic consumers. Uh, another question that has been haunting cons electricity consumers in the state for years, for over a decade, is probably the tariff itself. It's increasingly gotten more expensive um, to use electricity in the state over the last 10 years at least. Would the government be um, coming up any, with any schemes or measures to sort of contain that, sir? Government, what we have done so far, you know, domestic consumers, up to 200 units, we are giving so much of benefit to the domestic consumers. We are already giving 10 HP power to the irrigation, but I think not today, just giving ages. When I was a minister in Bangarapaji's ministry, that time only we have announced this scheme. That's why we are giving. And we are trying to the thing, you know, produce electricity cheaper electricity so that we can give the consumer much cheaper than what what is today. That's what we are trying. Now it may take little time. And uh, as far as HD consumers are concerned, uh, over the years we've seen a lot of HD consumers go out of the grid for open access. Um, measures were introduced to bring them back to the grid. They may have been successful to an extent, but we don't really know. Uh, how are you trying to uh, bring them back to the grid, so the, the high-paying HD consumers? I told all our Jesco uh, people, all our officers, you have to treat consumer as our other thing. They are they are our consumer. Actually, because of that, we are there. We have to treat them well. We have to prepare to give them, uh, this, you know, quality power and reduce the other thing. You see, somebody goes to that also we allowed. They should, the non earlier they are only depend upon the electricity and the energy the thing. Now they can go out and buy the power also. That's why we our people will be more competitive. They have to they wanted to bring back all the consumer to them. That's, that's the happy the thing. I'm always always like that type of a competition, with the private and the public. Uh, so next question is from uh, Mr. Venkatesh. So he is asking that if we ever uh, commit meter violations, maybe we have we are using uh, a residential for commercial purpose or something like that, uh, where we don't exactly know if we are violating or not. And upon someone's complaint, the officials just come and take away our meters without letting us know where we can go, where we can pay our fines and collect it back. So they say there is no challen or notice or anything given to us prior. So it is. They say that it is becoming a problem to track down uh, meters when this happens. So any uh, steps which are going to be taken in this regard, where notices would be given first. If there's two things in this question which you asked, one is if somebody intentionally is doing some the you know, theft and all the things, and uh, naturally they will take out that uh, the meter and all this, that uh, we have punishment, fines, that all will be imposed. If some innocent people, if they are being done, see, there are grievances still in the, the thing, in the energy department, best cover, the other the thing. They can approach, approach them. And we also got a vigilance cell. Uh, also, the grievances cell, both are there. They can approach. If nothing has happened, they can directly approach me also. I will take up these matters. Nothing else. But all the things I cannot handle. But if there's any special cases somewhere, all our senior officers will be there. Ultimately, it is not solved with any genuine problem. They are free to approach me directly or to my office. Uh, so next question is also from Mr. Abhilash, who had earlier asked a question. So he is asking, why can't KPTCL come up with a proposal or innovative idea of implementing gas insulated line project in and around Bangalore city uh, to lay high voltage uh, transmission lines in the existing corridors. He's saying this may even resolve severe right-of-way issues and avoid undue delay in commissioning the project. See, we, no, we already got a project, a gas-based project in Elanka, that, you know, that is about 500 megawatt energy. But unfortunately, I visited that plant also. 
There's some problem with the gale and the, see, our BESCON, about the rate or the KPCL, not BESCON, KPCL. Now, today also we had a meeting where I told, requested the ACS, Administrative Secretary of Power, to speak to the central officer, energy department, and to get it solved, not or it may be. That's what we are doing here. And there may be some. Uh, you are talking. You, you are talking about the gas substations. substations. That yes, is the yes. Yeah, that we can consider no problem at all. Immediately we can do it. And also we got some uh, uh, the thing, some ideas we got because the problem which we are facing, especially in Bangalore city, we wanted to expand the substations, but hardly any land is available in the thing in Bangalore city. That's why the sub suggestions has come. We can go underground. Substations can go underground. I was told that the South Korea and all this thing they are doing like that. That we are thinking so that we can expand the thing and we can have the latest uh, the thing, you know, equipment that is much smaller. So that we are thinking that way also. Uh, sir, next question is uh, from Mr. Akash Mora. Uh, he's asking about the KPTCL recruitment process of 2022, which is still not completed. He's saying around 1,400 aspirants and their families are eagerly waiting for this. So when will this be completed? I think recently it was stuck in the court. Uh, recently there was a court judgment is there. Uh, the court is cleared this matter. I think that I told our officers to process the other thing and go ahead with the recruitment that we need wanted to go and recruit the people as early as possible. Uh, Sir, Anup Nair has asked about the OC requirement for power connection. In 2022, the BESCOM had apparently uh, done away with its requirement. Uh, do people really need an OC to get a power uh, uh, connection now? You are asking uh, the thing, you know, OC connections of the thing the, naturally the, the thing no it is the it is a statutory thing and it is uh, the thing they have to fulfill certain uh, conditions and all that only they because the safety is also involved in the thing then the electrical people has to inspect and they say that everything is fine and then only for safety and the thing we have to allow that that is now also it is there it is never cancelled as for my knowledge is concerned I know. Uh, sir, next question is from uh, Mr. Dhanush. So he is asking if uh, government of Karnataka is pushing residential apartments to set up EV charging stations in their premises. He is asking if there are any incentives which are being given to resident welfare associations and if there are, how can they avail these incentives? See, we cannot give anything, especially for the apartments. There will be a uh, G, you know, green energy policy is there. And, uh, sir, the uh, UV policy is there. That we will allow them to do whatever the government policy is there, even that will be applicable for the apartment and as good as others also. The last question, sir, ever since Griha Jyoti started doing the rounds, there were two things that uh, came to the fore. One was a lot of people did not really understand the electricity bills. And uh, earlier, you know, there were consumer forums who've been asking for the electricity bill to be simplified or probably educate consumers more on how this whole billing process works. That's one aspect of it. Uh, second is the call center itself, so especially when it rains. Uh, a lot of people complain about how they can't really get through to BESCOM call center. I don't know what the situation is in the other ESCOMs. Anything being done to strengthen the whole uh, consumer aspect, sir? So? As far as electricity is I, I told you they are the masters of us consumers. We always respect them. There will be grievances. I can also understand. Because so many consumers are there. Naturally, there will be something will be there. Some grievances, some mistakes will happen from our side also. There's other call centers there where they can go to the BESCOM office. There are grievances that are there. Not only BESCOM, throughout the state, it is there. Every every uh, thing, BESCOM, it is there. That's why I don't think that it's any the thing. And you know that number is 92 is also there. That's what uh, you are complaining. 
sometimes they won't receive. That's I can understand. So many calls are coming at a time. That they should, but they should keep on this. How are uh, uh, one one lakh uh, one crore fifty four lakhs people how they are enrolled? That's why you know that the system is there. But they have to, that you, or they have to go personally and visit the Bescom office and get their deviances we are trust. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us, uh, taking the time out to answer our uh, questions. If any more questions are coming in after this, we'll probably have it sent them uh, over to you so you can clarify. And uh, thank you to all the readers for joining us, too. Thank you. Thank sir. you very much. So nice questions. Your customers, agreements, people, they asked. Anyhow, I thought I hope that they are be satisfied. Even if they are not satisfied, we are again we are prepared to answer whatever their grievances is there. And I wanted to assure one thing that we are for the consumers. We will serve them. And the government as a minister also, I'm representing the people. That's why I'm a people's man. One more thing I want to request through you. Please, the thing today we are passing through a very grievous situation. There's no rain. As much as our people can save energy, energy should not be wasted. That's why I request through you and to everybody, please save the energy as far as possible. Thank you for giving this opportunity.